Hello everyone. I am going to continue with my previous topic that is basic postulates of quantum mechanics. Already we have discussed first three postulates which is describing the state of a system, observable and operator and expectation value. And out of the five we are remaining with the next two postulate which will be discussed today that is measurement and eigenvalue and time development of quantum system which is with respect to dynamical system. So let's start. First let us discuss about postulate number four which is measurement and eigenvalue. In classical physics generally we consider any system and finally the outcome will be nothing but the measurement that is the output but in quantum mechanics or quantum physics what is the outcome we need to know and the measurement of any system is calculated only using the eigenvalue so let's see how it is going to happen statement we can just say that the possible values which are the measurements of an observable are the eigenvalues whose operator is a cap which gives you the eigenvalue equation a cap xi i is equals to a i xi i. What is the meaning? So when a system is taken and an operator is operated on that system let us say a cap finally we are getting some result that is the outcome and that outcome which is the measurement of an observable or the physical quantity will be only the eigenvalues of that system that is denoted by a cap xi i is equals to a i into xi i which is the eigenvalue equation. So conclusion is that the measurement of observables in quantum mechanics are given by eigenvalues only. Eigenfunction just describes about the state of a system that is gives some details about presence of a particle. And when you multiply with the complex conjugate, you are getting the probability. But any observable cannot be measured by the eigenfunction. Because we know the eigenfunction is a complex valued. But measurements are always going to be real. And we already know these eigenvalues are going to be real. And that's why they are the measurements of observables in case of quantum mechanics. And the condition on the wave function is that the eigenfunction xi i form a complete set of n independent functions. So there is a completeness condition which this eigenfunction has to satisfy which will be again derived and discussed in coming classes. So this is some detail about measurement and eigenvalue. But how it is going to work let us understand by an example. Consider the eigenvalue equation a cap xi i is equals to a i into xi i. That is system described by the wave function xi i will be operated by an operator a cap giving you the same wave function with a constant a i which is the eigenvalue. We have already studied about the expectation value. Expectation value is something we can say as the average value. Not exactly but in quantum mechanics roughly we can say it as an average value. So it is something like a measurement of an observable. So if you consider that let us see whether that measurement or the expectation value will be equal to eigenvalue or no. By the definition of expectation value we know that expectation value of any observable A will be equal to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of xi i star into a cap into xi i into d tau where within the integration sign we have the wave function and its conjugate but the operator corresponding to the observable on the LHS will be sandwiched in between the wave function and its complex conjugate. And from the above equation we can just put a cap into xi i is equals to a i into xi i. And a i is a constant that's why it can be brought outside the integration sign. Then we have a i is equals a i into integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of xi i star into xi i into d tau. Then 
the integration we know the value is going to be equal to 1 that is from the normalization condition. Finally, what we have obtained is the expectation value that is probabilistic outcome of measurement from a system is equal to the constant ei which is nothing but the eigenvalue. That's why we can just say that this eigenvalue is the only measurable quantity in case of quantum physics. Then what is the conclusion? So some rough conclusion and the important points under this postulate is for easy understanding as well as remembrance. First eigenvalues we know that these are only experimentally measured quantity because it is real always which we have already derived this eigenvalues are going to be always real. Then when they are going to be real eigenvalues of Hermitian operator are always real. This is the main property of Hermitian operator which we know and if you consider all these three statements all the three are with respect to eigenvalues which says that one it is the experimentally measurable quantity second point is it is going to be always real and third point that it has to be real means the operator should be Hermitian. So finally we can conclude that the operators associated with the physical quantities must be Hermitian. So the operators should be Hermitian and the corresponding eigenvalues will be always real which are measurable. So this is the conclusion which we can draw out of postulate number 4. Next we are going to study something related to probability amplitude. Let us consider the wave function phi which is given as summation over i ci xi i. So while explaining about the principle of superposition I had explained that a wave function can be written as combination of different wave functions. That is it allows us to analyze a complicated wave motion as a combination of a number of simple harmonic motions. So superposition concept of states allow us to construct or construction of wave packets. So this is the use of superposition principle based on which I am explaining a wave function is equals to summation of ci into xi i where ci is a coefficient. Then what is this ci? This coefficient ci is equals to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of xi i into phi into d tau. So even you can take xi or phi it is just a wave function but remember phi is not a eigenfunction. We have considered it to be only a wave function. In order to find out the outcome let us consider the expectation value of operator of observable A. So expectation value of A will be equal to integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of xi star A cap into phi star A cap into phi into d tau. Substituting the value of phi star that is complex conjugates and phi in the integration and the constants can be taken outside the integration sign which gives a summation over i and j ci star cj into integration from minus infinity to plus infinity of xi i star a cap into xi j into d tau. Now again we have the chronicle delta function. When i is equals to j then only we are getting some non-vanishable term that is equals to 1 that is delta ij. If i is not equal to j then it is going to vanish. So the integral will be equal to 0. So here I am considering i is equals to j. So we get summation over i ci star ci 
into integration from minus infinity to plus infinity xi i star a cap xi i into d tau and whatever we have considered previously is that the eigenvalue function eigenvalue equation a cap xi i is equals to a i into xi i the same thing i have substituted here and we can observe that we get the expectation value of a is equals to summation over i mod of ci whole square into ai into integration from minus infinity to plus infinity xi i star into xi i into d tau where the integration will be becoming equal to 1 that's why we are remaining only with the mod function and ai where ai is the eigenvalue so i am considering this square of mod of ci is equals to wi or you can say omega i and what is this omega i is equals to it just tells the probability of occurrence of eigenvalue ai in measuring the observable a so here based on this we can understand the probability of eigenvalue occurrence when you are measuring the observable let us say momentum position energy hamiltonian etc this we have already derived where probability will be equal to a1 square um, that is mod of a1 square mod of a2 square while studying the principle of superposition so based on the coefficients also we can just derive what is the probability of the system and the probability amplitudes are nothing but c1 c2 c3 and so on which are the coefficients which finally give you the information about probability of occurrence of eigenvalue so this is the details about postulate number four which is totally depending on the measurements or outputs or outcomes and in quantum mechanics it is totally due to the eigenvalue so whatever measurements are to be done can be understood or can be done only when we get the eigenvalue of that system so next let us move on to the last postulate which is a very important postulate which explains about time development of a quantum system means in order to understand any system which is in dynamic state we need this postulate number five in order to understand the time evolution what happens with respect to time so here we are going to understand the time development of a quantum system this can be described by the evolution of state function in time that is how a state function or a wave function xi is going to change with respect to time is understood based on the time dependent Schrodinger equation which is nothing but i h cross dou by dou t of xi of r comma t is equals to h into xi of r comma t so in order to understand about the time evolution of any quantum system we use the time dependent Schrodinger equation there are two types of Schrodinger equation one is time dependent and another one is time independent Schrodinger equation the difference is only that in time dependent Schrodinger equation we say that the wave function xi is a function of position as well as time and in case of time independent Schrodinger equation the wave function xi is only a function of position and it is not going to change with respect to time or you can say t is equals to zero so that is the difference between time dependent and time independent Schrodinger equation when this xi is independent of coordinates is depending on coordinates as well as time it doesn't mean that the operator which is h here it is also depending on time always this Hamiltonian operator which is denoted as h is independent of time only so this is called as Schrodinger picture or Schrodinger 
representation only we need to remember is that time dependence or independence is only with respect to the wave function and not the operator so what does this time development of quantum system mean is as the time is going on changing how the system is going to change is studied by using the time dependence schrodinger equation which we have already discussed so generally we say h z is equals to e into z when an operator h is operated on a wave function it gives a constant that is capital e with the same wave function itself and the h which is the operator is nothing but the hamiltonian operator and e is the energy eigen value and here it is the same energy in terms of operator we have e cap is equals to i h cross dou by dou t it is operate it is again with the wave function xi of r comma t which is equals to h into xi of r comma t h is nothing but hamiltonian operator which again tells about the total energy of the system so on the both the sides we can say we are having the energy terms itself with the wave function xi of r comma t with respect to classical physics if you consider in classical physics we say with respect to time a system is going to change with respect to the newton's laws of motion that is f is equals to ma is the equation of motion generally we consider in case of classical physics but when we consider with respect to quantum physics schrodinger equation which is the time dependent schrodinger equation is going to be considered like a equation of motion so this is the main concept of postulate number 5 which completes the overview of all the five postulates starting from description of a system or state of a system which is given by psi then coming to the observable that is physical quantities and their corresponding operators in quantum physics then third is the probabilistic outcome of measurement which is given by the expectation value fourth one is the measurement or the outcome of the system in quantum physics will be with respect to eigen value and finally when the state is in dynamic state then with respect to time how we can describe a system that is using this time dependent schrodinger equation which acts as a equation of motion is going to tell us the time evolution of a system so this five or these five postulates are the foundation of quantum mechanics which is of greater importance so just go through all of these this is for today's session thank you